we did um, try and rear otters with humans and we were successful at rearing the otters. You know, they, they grew and they became adult otters. They just were habituated to humans. And so, and that's really, you know, in retrospect, rather unsurprising because when you parent them, they'll attach to you. And, and so we just had to switch the parents. And what we discovered is that the otters are much better at rearing otters than we are, which I probably shouldn't have been a surprise. <laughs> Some of these animals that were coming to us were pups and sea otter pups have a have a prolonged dependency period where they're linked to their mom and uh, when they're separated from their mom they of course still need that extended care who's going to provide it for them right and um if if humans provide it for them then they become humanized We had at the same time um, um, a, um, an adult female who lost a pup and then a pup that stranded without a mom. And so we essentially had peanut butter and chocolate and we said, hmm, maybe we should put these things together and create something better. Then, you know, um, and uh, so we had that opportunity and, you know, luckily it worked. The mom accepted this pup. Um, who wasn't, you know, essentially she accepted the adoption of this pup who wasn't her own biological offspring. And then the gears started to turn with our staff at the time. Maybe we're onto something here. Maybe this could be the beginning of something new. And mom will look, she will swim up and down the coastline. I've done, I've done reunites before and you can hear the mom vocalizing from far away, um, trying to hear the pup vocalize back. Uh, and, and some of the times it's, it's successful, but it's pretty rare. them you know they may just be fine with just holding the pup uh, but not necessarily going and getting food for the pup or cracking open live for the pup and you have others that are much more fiercely maternal and they will do everything for the pup so they're able to be with that other otter with that surrogate but not necessarily in like a maternal bond but they're still successful and they can they can forage on their own and grow and not be stressed. And then we start introducing them to, um, to other otters, maybe of the same age, so that they can learn, learn how to appropriately interact with other, with other otters. We have proven that they, they, their survival and reproductive success is comparable to wild, wild-born pups. Their presence and their voracious diet means that the marine plants in that place will thrive. So whether it's kelp, the otters are eating urchins and abalone and other things which might overgraze those kelp forests if the otters weren't there and then disappear. Um, in an estuary is the eelgrass. It's a little bit more complicated, but if you don't have the otters there, the eelgrass won't thrive. And so um, that's why uh, sea otters have this important function. Often they're referred to as like a keystone species. 
and what that means is like, if you think of like the St. Louis arch, you think of this like architectural thing. If you took that stone out of the middle of the arch, the whole thing would fold in on itself. And otters are kind of like that, that capstone or that keystone at the very top that holds it all together. Thank you.